Morning, everyone. So today's topic is BCRS. So let's just start our session. So the first question is: Can anybody explain what is refrigeration? Anybody wants to explain what is refrigeration? And maintaining the temperature below the uh, atmospheric pressure, oh, okay. uh, atmospheric temperature. So am I am audible right now? Yeah. Okay. Your voice is slow, I think. Uh, I think it's because of the native. So am I audible right now? Yeah, it's yeah, okay. fine. Okay. So yes, uh, refrigeration is a process of removing the heat from a space and adding it to the surrounding, right? So, right yeah. And why do we need uh, refrigeration? For our comfort. Yes. And uh, uh, on board, uh, what are the examples of uh, VCRS? A vehicle system. If you go to the ports like uh, Africa, something where temperature will be very high, so it is more difficult to work uh, uh, for sleep in that temperature. So we have to reduce it. So refrigeration helps us to maintain a comfort temperature in the bedroom. Is the air condition right? In the refrigeration, we can mention to keep the food items like meat and fish. Ah, yeah, yeah. for a longer period of time while we are in voice right so that it can be stored for a longer time what is sensible heat Anybody wants to explain what is sensible heat? And uh, while explaining it, please turn on the camera. That way you can uh, boost your confidence, right? So it will be much helpful to you. Who wants to explain what is sensible heat? Anyone? I don't know correct the correct definition. Okay, sensible heat is then just give a try, no? Just give a try. Yeah. What's wrong in that? Yeah, you can try. Ashok. Speak up this. You go you go on um I am rather outside. Okay, problem. So sensible heat is the amount of heat that is required to change the temperature without changing the state of a fluid. So got it. That's the definition. So while we suppose we are uh, boiling water, so when we are adding heat, the temperature is increasing, right? So the amount yeah, yeah. of heat required to increase the temperature till the boiling point that is sensible heat. Then what is uh, latent heat? Latent heat it is the heat that absorbed during the phase change from one to change the phase from one to another. It yes. does not change the pressure uh, and the temperature will be also constant at that time. Yeah, the temperature will be constant. Is the amount of heat required to change the state without changing the temperature, right? Yeah. And then what is a latent heat of vaporization? Amount of heat required to change the phase so from uh, liquid to gas. Yes, correct. And uh, latent heat of uh, fusion? From liquid to, uh, sorry. Uh, from solid to gas. Yeah, at its melting point. In latent heat of fusion, 
mention uh, we should mention melting point and in later heat of vaporization we should mention that is boiling point right am i right yeah so then what is saturated steam first let's just clear the small basics and the definition then we will move on to the explanation of this here what is saturated steam Anyone? Who wants to explain? Today there are 15 guys. Saturated means the it's purely the gaseous substance. Am I right? Yeah, the steam that has the same temperature above the water. That is saturated steam, right? After heating, when the vapor that is produced, the vapor that has the same temperature as that of the water is called saturated steam. Am I right? If I am uh, saying something wrong, please correct me. Amstrong and uh, Salman, the other guys too. And uh, I think then, what is dry saturated steam? Anyone? Steam does, does not contain water droplets. Yes, the steam that does not contain any water molecules in it. And wet steam, wet saturated steam? Steam, steam which contains the water water molecules is called wet. Yes, steam. It's a two-phase mixture, right? The water droplets that have not changed its phase yet, and the vapors that have already changed its phase. So it's a two-phase mixture. And what is dryness factor? Can anybody explain what is dryness factor? So dynamic factor says that suppose there is 0 0.2 dynamic factor. That means that 20% of still the papers that have not changed this phase are present in the liquid. I uh, don't, don't know the exact uh, definition. Uh, can anybody explain the exact definition? Absent, uh, can you explain uh, what is dynamic factor? I don't know. Uh, I should not remember the exact definition of it. Yeah, yeah, I just can you repeat one again? So wait, I have just I think uh, one line regarding dynamic factor. So dynamic factor, suppose the dynamic factor is 0 0.8. Okay, so that means that 80 percent is dry. Total dry saturated uh, vapor is present, and 20 percent still the Vapor molecules that have not changed its state is present. Got it? The exact definition I need to look it up. I don't have the exact definition. I'll send it in the group. And then is what is super saturated steam? The steam having temperature higher than that of saturated steam. Yeah, anything that is above the boiling point. Above its boiling point is the super saturated state. Then what is liquefaction? Liquefaction. Liquefaction. Process of changing the gas uh, for uh, vapors into liquid. Yeah, the vapors into liquid. But converting gas into liquid that will be also alright, right? So how can we change it? How can we convert it? By reducing temperature. Yeah. And I think two ways are there, right? Either by pressurizing it or either by cooling it down, correct? Right? Yeah, yeah. And what is critical temperature? What critical point? Is the critical, temperature? critical temperature. Temperature, uh, point of temperature above which uh, uh, resisting to condense, I think. Or. Can you, yeah, can you repeat it again, please? 
temperature above which uh, uh, gas resists to condense yeah correct the temperature okay. above which no matter how much pressure will apply gas will not convert into liquid yes and what is specific volume in the formula it's a volume by mass yes volume to temperature by mass then uh, what are the processes that are involved in pcls and the components isent the isentropic uh, yes yes please speak up uh, just add isentropic the compression in a compressor then in condenser it's isobaric uh, heat rejection in thermostatic expansion valve it's isenthalpic expansion in the evaporator it's isobaric heat addition in the evaporator isobaric heat absorption is the uh, yeah salman uh, is giving the definition of uh, dynamics factor dynamics factor is the ratio of mass dynamics factor dynamics fraction is the ratio of mass of vapor and sum of mass of vapor plus water vapor of water plus water vapor okay so if anybody wants to note down the definition please note it down from the chat box so you said it uh, what what did you said uh, isobaric in evaporator right yeah yeah isobaric heat absorption and what does isobaric means constant pressure the process is carried out in constant pressure so uh, is the pressure constant in the evaporator yeah uh, i think it's isoporic right isoporic heat absorption am i right is it isoporic oh okay am i am i right isoporic um, heat absorption right where where uh, evaporator in evaporator yeah no it's isoporic no isoporic yeah, it's isoporic i think it's isoporic yeah isoporic not isoporic it's isoporic the right? so pressure remains constant in the evaporator right Yes, yes. Okay, yes. Or not right. isoporic. Okay, I thought it was okay. My mistake. I thought mm -hmm. it was isoporic. Okay. No, no, isoporic. So see on the pH curve. You can see on the pH curve. You can see the pH curve. Yes, sir. 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 whole cycle of the vcl system it's written over there in my notes i should bar it but there i should go there process starts the process starts in the condenser then no sorry i'm sorry yeah turn on your cameras and explain no it will gain you confidence yeah yeah correct yeah yeah the end gestures and all will give you confidence correct Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, Kevin. Uh, so the process takes place from the con condenser. Uh, the condenser uh, pulls the high, uh, low pressure, uh, low temperature vapor from the evaporator and then condenses it in the uh, condenser uh, through section A. Then from section B, it transfers it to the con uh, condenser where it has uh, coils, which uh, compressor where it compresses it to high pressure and high temperature. uh liquid and then it goes to the receiver from the receiver it goes uh, it stores a high temperature and high pressure liquid and then through the thermos uh, thermostatic expansion valve it goes to the evaporator where it is converted into a uh, vapor that is uh, uh low uh, te low temperature uh, low temperature and pressure va uh, vapor it's converted into low temperature and low pressure vapor and then the whole cycle repeats What happens after the thermostatic expansion valve? Can you please repeat that part? Uh, after the thermostatic uh, expansion valve, it goes to the evaporator. The high pressure, uh, high temperature. Uh, no, it it actually reduces its uh, temperature, uh, temperature and pressure, and goes to the evaporator. And then it uh, the evaporator actually evaporate uh, converts into low pressure and low temperature vapor, and it goes back to the condenser. Yeah. Uh, Basically, thermostatic expansion valve acts like an orifice. So, when the refrigerant <laughs> passing through it, uh, the pressure and temperature decrease decreases. So, it is converted to low pressure, low and also the phase changes. Phase phase becomes uh, vapor plus 
liquid mixture so the low after uh, thermostatic expansion the, the refrigerant becomes low pressure low temperature liquid plus vapor mixture yeah, yeah. then it goes plus. to the ev evaporator and absorbs heat and converted to saturated vapor so and it was controlled by sensing bulb which is which is to go the gap like tube Capillator, does... yes. Uh, signals is passed through the capillator, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. How does the we will uh, explain the working of capillary tube and sensing bulb tube. So, how does the Salman has added a question. So, just let me read out the question. How does the temperature decreases in thermostatic expansion bulb? It is because of the uh, I think it's a law called Joule Thomson law. When uh, Gay Lucas law. Uh, when the pressure and temperature is was high, velocity was increasing, and then pressure pressure was decreasing, so temperature was decreases. So vapor vapor plus liquid mixture was go, goes into evaporator. It was basically Gay Lucas law, but it not applicable in this VC August uh, because Gay Lucas law only applicable for for ideal gas ideal gases only. Yeah. In YouTube video, Gyan says that it's uh, uh, yeah. Joule Thompson law. It says no, that whenever a don't liquid mention passing... Okay, okay. I will I also mention. found Just Joule say. Thompson law. Just mention Joule Thompson's effect. So what? I will not mention it in the interview. What should be the yeah, perfect yeah. answer for this? People directly say that because it's a change. Because since the pressure is decreasing, due to this region, the... Uh, uh, first of all, of uh, when the org is uh, uh, there is a thermostatic expansion wall, uh, high pressure, high temperature is convert uh, is converted low pressure, low temperature. Why? Because of velocity increases. If the velocity increases, pressure decreases, and then pressure decreases, temperature also get decreased. This is the uh, cooling process in thermostatic expansion. Wall. Can also say that after the refresh, the volume get increased. The same principle is applied yeah, in here. Yeah, yeah. Correct, yeah. So because of the enlargement of the volume, the pressure yeah, yeah, is decreasing. Right? Sudden, sudden increase in volume, so velocity increase. Okay, anybody else wants to try? Or uh, I would also try to like to answer this question in the whole cycle. It's the same thing in gear pump, no? How the temperature is, uh, pressure is reducing? That's what you're saying. Getting out yeah, of yeah, the mesh, yeah. you are saying that getting out of the mesh, yes, there yes. is a sudden increase in water. Oh, yeah. So, the processes are, are, are already explained. So, what have you been saying? Sapraj, so, explain, explain it again. I want to see how you present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will try. With the CRS, I want to see how you explain with the sensing bulb. Mention, mention sensing bulb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Salman is uh, messaging because pressure decreases, some of the refrigerant points evaporates by absorbing a latent heat from the surrounding. As a result, temperature of the liquid decreases. And I think uh, what uh, the heat that is being present, suppose the, please correct me if I'm wrong, what if suppose when the refrigerant is passing through the orifice the temperature of the refrigerant was let's say 40 degrees celsius so it's getting converted to minus 20 degrees celsius right so that heat is being absorbed by the uh, refrigerant vapor correct and the remaining 80 percent uh, refrigerant liquid remains cool am i right am i right i'm sure so what I was having, no, he, okay. the Jules Thompson effect, no, it was actually an experiment conducted by him. So what I what answer I have, no, so it was like when he throttled a fluid from a higher higher pressure to a lower pressure, no, and uh, he found that he throttled like uh, this the temperature versus pressure, so temperature on the y axis and pressure. So for some uh, throttling, like from uh, like say. 
so 10 bars to around 7 bars, he found that temperature was increasing. And upon some limit below the temperature, some limit that is called as inversion temperature, it decreased. So this was actually an experiment. So as you the fluid throttles from higher pressure to a low pressure, the uh, temperature of the fluid drops below the inversion temperature. So this is what have to, you have to say. Because Joule, Joule Thomson effect is what this is. Salman, is it correct? Because I have seen a video of this. I think Salman has also said the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in Should the interview... Should we say Joel Thompson effect in interview? Yeah, that's what I have my question. Should we mention it or should we try to avoid it? Cross questions may Could ask be they, they can ask, no, what is Joel Thompson effect? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can answer oh, it if like they that. ask, we can say, but we yeah, yeah. Ha have had to... Just go on YouTube and see Jules Thompson effect. You'll find videos on that. So it yeah, was an yeah. experiment. Okay. So it's not that every fluid, if you decrease the pressure, the temperature will reduce. It's only when it reduces below the inversion temperature. And it uh, this is uh, based on the characteristics of the refrigerant. It can't be like water water in the system, and then you decrease its pressure, then the temperature will drop. So it's a characteristic of the refrigerant view. Okay. So but the uh, it. In thermostatic yeah. expansion role, there is yeah. a uh, en enthalpy process. Enthalpy was constant. Yes. Uh, enthalpy was constant. How does the heat? How does the heat will observe from the surrounding? No, it, in this process, the heat of uh, the uh, loss of heat is uh, like uh, negligible. It is assumed to be negligible. That's so what I know. What do you say, Asalman? Sorry, I didn't get, uh, didn't hear the question. What was it? What was the question? My question was, uh, hmm. in thermostatic expansion wall, hmm. there is a constant enthalpy. Uh, hmm. If you say that there is a heat absorption in uh, surrounding to uh, thermostatic expansion wall, how does hmm. it... Uh, it will occur. Uh, if we add the heat, means that uh, there is no constant enthalpy, right? So, like the constant, uh, the steady, there is a steady state equation. Okay. So for that, na, when you, for when you apply it to a control volume, na, so in that, the different factors, all all these factors gets cancelled, and then finally enthalpy rim gets constant and it is dependent on uh, this thing uh, I'll, I'll send i'll send a photo of that in the group Salman is heat absorbed in the thermostatic expansion valve it is only absorbed in the evaporator no you are saying that the energy is converted from one form to another but not uh, energy changes you are saying that am i right because in his law no jules thompson in fact he's, uh, he has mentioned that there is no heat uh, uh, heat transfer to the surrounding is uh, mentioned over there. In this law, it is, basically heat energy is converted into some other energy. Heat uh, energy. Heat energy is converted into. Uh, and heat energy is not uh, energy does not loss, but the heat energy is converted into on form, which can be. Uh, which can be occurring in thermostatic expansion or so the, there is a constant enthalpy, right? I'll send the snap of that. I have it in my book. Okay. I'll send it in some time. Currently, I'm outside. So I'll send it when I reach home in the group sure, sure, sure. about that, yeah. how, how it remains constant. Okay. So uh, now I will try to explain the whole VCR cycle. Okay. So starting from the compressor, first the low pressure and low temperature superheated refrigerant that is coming from the evaporator goes into the compressor. Then the compressor compresses it and which increases the pressure and the temperature. Then this superheated refrigerant passes to the condenser. The condenser is a type of heat exchanger which has sea water line thin. Now, when this superheated refrigerant is passing to the condenser, first of all, a temperature drop takes place since the refrigerant is superheated, it goes to saturated vapor. And then, because of the seawater, the cooling effect takes place and 
the refrigerant vapor is getting converted into saturated liquid because of condensation and then it goes to the dryer the dryer has silica gel in it and it absorbs the moisture that is present in the refrigerant liquid and then it passes to the thermostatic expansion valve the thermostatic expansion valve acts as a regulating device to control the flow of refrigerant into the evaporator it has an orifice so when the refrigerant liquid passes through the orifice due to the sudden enlargement of the volume the pressure decreases and because of this pressure decrease the temperature also decreases and this saturated liquid converts into a mixture of refrigerant vapor plus refrigerant liquid we can say it's 20 percent refrigerant vapor and 80 percent refrigerant liquid and then this mixture of refrigerant enters into the evaporator so the evaporator has the cooling space and the refrigerant absorbs the heat from the evaporator which cools down the air inside the evaporator and converts itself into fully full fully refrigerant and while passing through the evaporator it gains the latent heat due to which it becomes super uh, superheated vapor refrigerant and then no no not superheated saturated vapor saturated isn't it the degree of super heat uh, if it's increasing so it's just super heat after sensing bulb it's super heated na the temperature uh, increases when does the temperature increase it increases when it converts fully into refrigerant vapor right inside the evaporator after evaporator it is saturated vapor okay after a uh, sensing bulb i think it's superheated vapor gyan said that no this uh, safraj you can mention also superheated but uh, not to mention just stick to the basic one okay basic so we can say saturated vapor so from that line now you put a line you start a line like you seen the ph curve just see the ph curve so now i will also open just see the ph curve so you draw a line from the dome no the connecting from the dome yeah yeah so from that point it is saturated vapor and if you go beyond that it is superheated vapor so we stick to the basic okay yeah, yeah. this so, then okay. so it's better to say saturated vapor okay so then the refrigerant converts into fully saturated vapor and towards it flows out and towards the discharge side of the evaporator out towards the discharge side of the evaporator a sensing bulb is fitted the sensing bulb is connected to the thermostatic expansion bulb with a capillary tube the sensing bulb senses the temperature of the refrigerant and if the degree of superheat is more it signals the thermostatic expansion bulb to increase the flow of refrigerant into the evaporator and if the degree of superheat is less then it signals the thermostatic expansion bulb to reduce the flow of refrigerant into the evaporator and finally this the refrigerant goes into the compressor to get it, to get compressed so uh, am i right emston your inputs on this yeah safraz you are very good but can you explain this sensing bulb part again i just missed it so the explanation how is it working or just Uh, no, no, just, just, just uh, how you explain okay. the components. No? The sensing bulb is connected in the refrigerant line, and it senses the temperature. Mention it. Mention it. It is uh, fitted at the exit of the evaporator. Okay, it is fitted at the exit of the evaporator, and it senses the temperature of the refrigerant. If the degree of super heat is higher in the refrigerant, then this sensing bulb signals the thermostatic expansion bulb to increase the flow of refrigerant into the evaporator and if the degree of superheat is less then it signals the thermostatic expansion bulb to uh, reduce the flow of refrigerant into the evaporator and finally this refrigerant heated refrigerant goes into the compressor and the cycle continues am i right okay i think meel was uh, saying something Yeah, you overall you are good. 
so some points to be uh, looked upon so firstly you said you not mention the uh, process is like if you say from the compressor no so what process takes place over the isentropic isentropic so that did not mention uh, the baric in the condenser yeah, yeah. while saying yeah, yeah. like saving the saturated vapor in the compressor comp uh, yeah compresses it to isentropically to a high pressure high temperature supported vapor then you should say high pressure high temperature supported vapor goes into the condenser uh, and rejects its heat isobarically to the heat sink that is sea water and converts itself into uh, high pressure slightly lower temperature uh, yeah. this uh, saturated liquid vapor like this okay yeah, yeah, I forgot liquid, also liquid. so mention the processes rest all was also don't mention that 20 percent uh, this will be present and 80 percent salman right Okay. Now, it is not always that 20 percent uh, uh, vapor will be formed in 80 percent liquid. Salman, it varies, I think, as per the cooling yes, load, it, 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 varies, it, yeah. will, it will vary. It yeah, yeah, varies. don't mention that 20 and the 80 percent, okay, and the rest was okay. Uh, yeah, and you mentioned cooling effect, okay, in the condenser, you mentioned cooling effect is produced in the condenser. I heard about it, so I noted it. So, don't say cooling effect, okay. Just say it uh, rejects its uh, heat to the heat sink, okay, or the sea water, okay. Don't mention cooling effect. They may, might get a wrong impression that cooling is produced in the condenser and not the evaporator. Got it, na? Okay. okay. Rest all, all of the things were good. I should say it rejects its heat, right? Yeah, yeah, it rejects heat to the heat sink, that is sea water. Sea water. And uh, should yeah. we mention the subcooling part in the condenser before leaving uh, when the... No, 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 don't, don't mention, don't mention. Effect? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I am I have doubt in the subcooling portion. Can I yeah. present the screen? Yeah. Okay. Can you able to see the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm soon there is a subcooling process. Uh, the question was asked by the Kamlesh Hutta. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, what happened if the heat of the evaporation in in point two, the um, heat of the evaporation was subcooled, the efficiency also increased or decreased? Uh, what happened? Uh, I did not get you. What was the question? If the, if the vapor was subcooled, means where does the subcooling process occur? After the point two, the figure that you yeah. have shown me, after the point two, uh, towards one, so that is the uh, subcooling process. Uh, which part? Uh, one to two. Like a... Two to one. Yeah, two to two one. Yeah, two to one will be the subcooling process. So you see four to, but this figure is not correct. You should show all lines will be connected, na? One, two, three, four. Where is the evaporator comp compressor? See a figure. See a figure which uh, has all the sub. Try to part. find a different figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is this okay? But I, I cannot see it. It's very small. Yeah, can you just maybe zoom it? Yeah, yeah. It, even after pin. Yeah, <laughs> I pinned it. Yeah, yeah. Still, I can't see like. Okay, there. This, this is the basic one. Did not mention the sub cooling and all. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll find. Uh, I'll find. Hello. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'll see whether I find an yeah, online. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a three to four process uh, in thermostatic expansion. You see that? Uh, I is saying that the constant enthalpy. Uh, this only. Okay. Okay. That is that is not subcooling. Uh, okay, okay, uh, but I early um, yeah, I don't say that subcooling. Just give a minute. You all carry on in the mid only. If I find a figure, I'll search online. If I find a figure, I'll present the screen and show you. Okay, okay. okay. I have a good idea of the subcooling part, so I'll explain it. Okay. Mainly, asking how is the pressure. How is pressure decreasing while volume is increasing? So when the volume is increasing, the pressure is decreasing. So, 
yes when it passes to the orifice so why is it uh, increasing right Can you explain uh, why is the pressure uh, decreasing when the refrigerant is flowing through the orifice? Because of, uh, can we uh, say it with because of the venturi effect? Yeah, volume increases. Yeah. Uh, if the volume increases, there is a pressure, pressure decreases. Decrease. So you can say it because of venturi effect too, right? Yeah. Yeah. According to sensing bulb. Uh, there is a volume will be decreased and increased in orifice in thermostatic heat control. So uh, we can uh, use this word, right? Uh, because of the venturi effect, because when the refrigerant passes to the orifice, because of the enlargement of the volume, the pressure is decreased. That's what sensing will say, right? I think the proper pipeline is decreased towards expansion valve. Have you read it somewhere? Because uh, we have, I have only read that it's because when the refrigerant passes to the orifice, then then, then only because of the sudden increase in volume, the pressure is decreasing. Yeah. So according to me, it's because of venturi. Anybody wants to add something? Mention Jewel Thompson effect, no? Why are I mentioning Venturi effect? Okay, Jewel Thompson effect. So why can't that uh, fresh water generator we all have? Where they, why doesn't they, the temperature reduce? They can be a cross question, no? Yeah, yeah. Correct. Venturi effect. So they also water starts boiling. So why not temperature reduces over there? Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't the mention that. But, uh, yeah, don't mention that. Uh, don't mention Venturi effect. Is Jewel Thompson effect? Need to study the whole June Thompson effect. Just see videos you'll get from YouTube. It's kind of 20 minutes video. Is there? He'll explain. It was an actually an experiment, not a okay. uh, law or something. It was an experiment. So, uh, can I explain the working of the sensing bulb? Can I? Yeah. Sensing bulb is a device which is uh, located in exit of the evaporator and uh, it will sense the temperature of the evapor uh, gas get out from the evaporator uh, and it will sense the if the temperature of the uh, refrigerant was low than the desired temperature it means the uh, heat absorption was attained the attained heat temperature is attained. Uh, and temperature was attained desired so the refrigerant flow will be less uh, sensing bulb uh, sense the temperature and then uh, passes the signal uh, signal to the gap length to uh, to a thermostatic expansion wall so the volume get decreased if that if the temperature was high uh, higher than the desired temperature means the Sensing will uh, sense it and then uh, pass it through the signal to the capillary tube, and then uh, it will flow more amount of refrigerant to cool the uh, to cool the substance. Am I right? Yeah. Also, sensing bulb make sure that the refrigerant is in its uh, vapor form, right? Yeah, fully vapor form. Yeah. Fully vapor. Like saturated vapor. vapor. So. The refrigerant, the sensing bulb is fitted at the discharge line. So, what the... is the signal? Yeah, yeah I was who, who explained the Vaishak? No, Vaishak, yeah. who explained no, it? No? Ashok, Ashok. Yeah, you yeah, mentioned yeah. signal. No, what is the signal then? Uh, it signals the it signals to capillary tube. I know, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I understood, but, signal. Uh, but what kind, what kind of signal? They can be electrical signal also, no. Electrical yeah, signal I, did, I didn't know about the signal, but uh, in video I saw that uh, passed through the signal in capillary. Okay, okay. 
okay okay, okay. Uh, you can also explain that also i'm sure i will try to explain Safra, if, if i have Safra, wrong let's safra let's explain yeah yeah i will try to explain and uh, i am simply correct me if i'm wrong so the sensing bulb is fitted at the discharge line of the evaporator and the same refrigerant that is flowing in the main system is present at the sensing bulb the, the refrigerant is present in a confined very small confined space so when the degree of superheat is more suppose the degree of superheat is more and then the refri uh, the sensing bulb will sense the temperature of the refrigerant due to which it will start boiling and the pressure will increase right so when the pressure will increase it is connected to the thermostatic uh, expansion bulb with the help of the capillary tube right? so the refrigerant that is in the capillary tube will flow towards the thermostatic expansion bulb because of the increase in pressure that is taking place in the sensing bulb and then this refrigerant will hit the diaphragm of the thermostatic expansion bulb due to which the diaphragm will hit the pin there is a pin in the thermostatic expansion bulb and that pin will push the poppet bulb and the spring will go down so the thermostatic the components of the thermostatic expansion bulb are first the diaphragm then the pin then the poppet bulb and below the poppet bulb there is the spring and so when the poppet bulb goes down the orifice the size of the orifice increases due to which the flow of the refrigerant it increases the flow of the refrigerant and if the degree of superheat is less then the pressure will decrease in the sensing bulb due to which the refrigerant that is in the capillary tube will flow back towards the sensing bulb and it which because of the spring because of the spring force it will uh, it, retract back it will retract because, back because pressure won't act, act yeah. on the yeah. uh, diaphragm no so yeah. because the spring force it will come back and then the flow will be restricted flow will be restricted won't be flow won't be restricted to zero there will be some flow based on the uh, on what you said and okay. so it was correct okay. rest of the things are good okay. yeah okay. yeah good explanation so sorry can you repeat uh, Uh, when the temperature is decreased suppose you can the, see the recording you can see the recording it will take yeah, sure sure okay. yeah yeah so the next uh, question uh, yeah, one co- cross question for you safraz yeah uh, wh- what happens if you superheat it after the evaporator what will happen let's say we don't have a sensing bulb and it uh, goes on superheating and then it enters into the compressor what would happen so it's put it's in fully vapor state right yes so better na for the compressor if it is fully in the vapor state yeah it will be better but then uh, more pre- the work the load on the compressor will be increasing right it will yeah, yeah, away correct, correct. get away from the saturation dome no 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 you are correct sir what you said is correct okay the load on the, the compressor, compressor will take, yeah compressor will taking more please bring this type of patience please yeah <laughs> I have I this I have never had this question. So what if the thermostatic expansion valve fails? Then what will happen? I think I have got this question somewhere. That's why I wrote it down. Any pressure, any temperature will enter the evaporator. So cooling process will not take place. And what will happen if high pressure and high temperature refrigerant will pass into the evaporator? I guess the item which the friction passing through the evaporator it will damage the uh, it will damage the compressor as well as the cooling will not occur yeah. and then uh, there is a total failure of the refrigeration system. Since the okay. boiling point will be high, so the refrigerant won't be able to convert itself into uh, refrigeration this one uh, into fully vapor form, right? Yeah. So that's why it will uh, get the get into the compressor in liquid form, which will damage the compressor. Am I right, Amshar? Okay. So, what is the saturation dome? Okay, let me think. Question. What is the saturation dome? Saturation dome is a dome that indicating the phase of a uh, uh, substance. If the substance uh, is a uh, Situated below the uh, saturation dome, it is in vapor, liquid form. When inside, it is va- liquid plus vapor form. 
outside in uh, on the line it's it's saturated liquid and vapor and outside the dome it is superheated vapor okay should i mention right hand side and left hand side or should we directly explain in this way because it one side it's full it's superheated right the yeah it's better to side. mention that left side and right yeah because and what is the point that distinguish between the saturated liquid and the saturated vapor line or the dome someone said no on the line you have saturated liquid and some you have saturated saturated vapor so what is that point called wherein there is distinguished between the saturated vapor and the saturated liquid we are asking what is the uh, thing called that when the liquid mixture is present uh, saturated liquid means number of so solid uh, which cannot be uh, added any more it's a different but such no, someone problem. mentioned that on the dome you have saturated liquid na so it can't be like the hill top like from there can't mention like which point will be saturated liquid and which will be saturated vapor yeah yeah on the on the dome line i'm saying so what yeah, distinguishes yeah. between the both so saturated liquid line and saturated vapor line so if i show a point on the uh, this or the mountain that on the dome top hill so if i select a point what would you say is it a saturated liquid line or saturated vapor point it will be liquid when we pass through the condenser right so is there any name given to the point when we just convert critical point remember this it's called critical yeah, yeah, yeah. critical point and critical temperature is the temperature above which So it's below critical point and above crit critical point, right? What are the properties of uh, refrigerant? Properties of a good refrigerant? Uh, non non toxic, non inflammable. Non explode, low boiling point, low freezing point, low vapor, uh, low um, vapor heat of evaporation. Right. Why? Uh, uh, low what boiling. does it? Have? Yeah, low boiling point, low freezing point, and low latent heat of vapor vaporization. Vaporization. So why? Have high heat of vaporization. High latent heat of vapor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. High latent heat of vapor. Don't do some such mistakes, no. It creates a wrong impression on the this. If you don't, yeah. don't say. If you have no, heating kind of thing, don't say. Better to say yeah. only non-toxic, non-flammable, non-explosive, rather yeah, than yeah. saving having a very low uh, latent heat of this vapor. Yeah, well. actually, I know correct, but uh, right now I make mistake. Low G and BWP and also. Low ozone depletion potential. So what is uh, low? This what you said? GWP and this. What is that? Oh, uh, global, global warming low. potential. Yeah, yeah. Global yeah, warming but... potential. Yeah. What is that? It means it will not harm the ozone layer. It is the it is the measure of how this oxygen will harm the uh, cause the global warming. Comparing with the carbon dioxide. Actually, all the refrigerant yeah, correct, correct. arm. What you said, no, is correct. You should yeah. mention that you are uh, with uh, compared to CO two. That is the correct answer. So, in low global warming potential, it's compared to CO two and low ozone depletion potential. Is it? So I had a rebate. Huh? I had written it somewhere. I don't remember where it written it. Correct definition for that. Huh? What is global warming potential? So I'll sh share with you all. Okay, later. Just Sector? remind me on Safras. Yeah, yeah, Just note it down, okay? Ozone awesome depletion model uh, compare into which? Uh, uh, I forgot it. So what do we compare ozone depletion potential? Just wait on Salman is calling me, okay? Wait. Safras? Yeah. Ah, uh, I have a doubt. Yes. How does the uh, refrigerant uh, get into the uh, uh, VC August? 
that they didn't get into the VCRS. Yeah. Like system, How does the refrigerant flow in the VCRS? Because of the compressor. What does the compressor do? It increases the pressure, right? So on one side towards the discharge side, it high pressure. And towards the suction side, it low pressure. And fluid always flows from higher pressure to low pressure, right? So this question is a very good question. I think uh, it has WR I this question. What is the function of the so GWDP, no global warming potential. Yeah. The definition is the rate of global warming uh, caused by the refrigerant upon the rate of global warming potential caused by CO2. So this is the definition for global warming potential. Similarly, for the Mick, just mute yourself. Mick. Oh, wait. okay. Okay, and ODP is rate of uh, ozone depleting, uh, depleting caused by the uh, refrigerant, which is there present. And upon the rate of ozone depletion caused by R11 or R12 refrigerant. Okay, so these are the definitions. I'm sorry, don't I say right? like, uh, yeah, what you said? I said, uh, he's, uh, he was asking me how is the refrigerant flowing in the system. I said, because of the compressor. Since the compressor yeah, yeah. increases the pressure on the discharge side and which yeah, the refrigerant flow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's the function of the compressor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like pump in the pump. This, no? centrifugal pump, how you draw. That creates the flow, no? so it's similar kind of compressor. I have a one question. Like uh, we always hear that uh, refrigerant is uh, uh, de deplete ozone layer and uh, it's responsible for global warming. So my question is, we know the refrigerant flow inside the uh, y uh, copper pipe. So how it, like where it, uh, you know, how it can damage ozone layer, deplete ozone layer, like where from because of leak or something else? Yeah, it's because of leak. So you mean when ozone will only deplete because somewhere refrigerant is leaking uh, to the atmosphere in the I think the we have to open the refrigeration. Uh, a cooling pot which uh, which cools the system system no uh, like f codes and uh, these are the systems we cool the we cool that if you open the door means the refrigerant will flow the gas will flow out of the environment so that will uh, affect the ozone layer i think correct me no. if i am wrong no i think the refrigerant flowing inside the uh, pipeline uh, so how it's uh, come to contact with atmosphere? It's somewhere because of the leaking that is taking. So we should ensure so, that no leaking is taking place. Yeah. So only when the because of leaking. Yeah, I read it, it that it's because of the leaking. Okay. Okay. So, but uh, for uh, one uh, more important is is leaking take place only when we are using or because of in factories, because it's so much responsible, you know. Uh, so much responsible. So I don't just just like uh, we know carbon monoxide come when we burn something. So it direct contact with atmosphere. So I can understand uh, it will go up and uh, and will harm. So that's why I'm a little confused. And if, as we know that while working or manufacturing, we always prepare to not to leak. Uh, you know, we do some proper. Uh, uh, all the precautions to not uh, not leak. So I don't think only leaking will uh, responsible or do ozone deplete. Have you tried to find anything else in uh, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just come right now when he asks one question. So I just come right now. I think it's because of the leaking. In normal refrigerator, uh, AC units that we use, uh, you know. Uh, you know, back in there also leakage takes place, right? In the refrigerator that we use in our home, it decreases wider. Maybe because of the compressor damage and all, maybe oil has got, in, got into the refrigerant, then they, that has to be vented out and maybe then again it has are, to be charged. So, yeah. It's not only only the leakage part, maybe some component is not working. Oh, okay. Maybe because of that also. So it finally, so it, it has to go to the atmosphere. No, you can't store it somewhere in the this and all because it's finally gas yes, which will occupy more volume. So finally, it has to go into the atmosphere. 
so those are chlorine chlorine and all they dissociate in the uv rays when they fall on that that dissociates the uh, molecules of the ozone ozone layer on the atmosphere so it depletes the ozone in this layer So, uh, next question is what are the refrigerant that are used common refrigerant common refrigerant used nowadays yes sir. Uh, nowadays uh, uh, r134a which is what is that nowadays what is that nowadays refrigerant used. Ah, nowadays nowadays okay 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 yeah, uh, R134A, which is widely used, and this is uh, which is tet tetrafluoroethane, and other is 404A, 407C, 4010A, and yeah, this is and all are S SCF, SFCS, hydrofluorocarbons. 407A. So I have a cross question for you. Wait, 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 sir. I have a cross question for you. Okay. Why only this and why not R11 and R12? R11 and R12 we used before and uh, and it was at CFCS, hydrochlorofluorocarbon, which is more responsible for ozone depletion uh, in comparison to R34 and other SCFS, uh, HFCS uh, refrigerant. So is there no ref this uh, ozone depleting potential for R134A, R407A, no? Yeah, it is responsible, but uh, it's not as much responsible like R212 and R32. Uh, and now, uh, now uh, one more refrigerant is R, is uh, HFO, hydrochloroolefin, is much better than HFCS. So it is, I mean, all the... Uh, group of refrigerant uh, will uh, responsible for ozone depletion but some do more some some are less okay so what is r407a r407a is uh, the group of uh, hydro hydrofluorocarbons uh, and uh, i don't know actually what does it a, so B. if you don't know, no, don't mention. This was asked by me for, by this copy of interviewer. If you know something, if, if you are mentioning something, you should know everything about it. So just stick to only two or three refrigerants. So this was asked to me. All were looking at me. So they asked me what, why, why you don't use uh, the other refrigerants? So I told him about R11, R12, what they cause, what is their ozone depleting potential, what is their global warming potential. Then he said. Why not this? Uh, what what is the ODP ODP of this R one thirty four A? Then what are the compositions of the R four zero four A? If you are mentioning, you should know what is the composition. Like it like R four zero seven C contains R thirty two R one thirty four A and R twenty five A. Even composition they can ask because many interviews are there. No, they can ask if one asks about what is the composition, then other will ask what what blends are there. So you should be sure. You can't say you don't know whether. So if I don't know what would I say like only R134 so I know only about R134A and just mention all, all all that you can know that would be better rather than saying all of that and doing nothing of that will better mm. like that. Okay. Mention something we need to know everything. Like you mean composition uh, composition uh, like that I said R134 is which is tetrafluoroethane like that. The name of the refrigerant is single, single refrigerant. When you say R1, R404A, R404A, mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. contains three blends, correct? Na? I have the what? Uh, this. Three? What three? Three refrigerant, mixture of three refrigerants. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, hydro and fluoro and carbon. Not like Hydrate. that. No, oh. R404A contains three refrigerants. Those are R25, mm -hmm. R134A, R43A. If you want, you can mention it right mm -hmm. over there. So these are the three blends in this refrigerant. So by using this, you get mm -hmm. a, a low global global warming potential as compared to R134A. You should mention like this over there. As of what I know in IMS, you have to mention like this because there are many interviews. There were around eight or ten interviews. If mm -hmm. he asks one question on that, more cross question. Then subdivision, more cross question. Why only, yeah, yeah. Why only R404A? 
when I said the properties of them. If you don't mm-hmm. answer means you don't know. You're just mentioning like on top of the world, like just uh, this. And I was also thinking that if I say only one, and he will say he does not know much. He only know one or two. So that's why I'm saying three to four. No, no. If you mention those, you should know what are the properties, what is the blend. You should know, no. It's hardly two, three of them. Okay. Still knowing, knowingly you are not going. No, knowing then what was the reason then? Purposely you are doing like no. You know the and uh, you know you know that you should uh, know the all the parts of it. You're not studying, so it's a problem. No? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Correct. No. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. You at least correct. at least three you should mention. I had mentioned three. Rest others I knew, but I did not mention because I do not know them. On board, what are the recipes that you use? Yeah, these are the specific one. This is tried and tested. One thirty-four. Listen, R one thirty-four A, R four zero four A, and R four zero seven C. Only three. This three you all can mention with properties and the composition. Oh, yeah, yeah. What what refrigerants are they? Another question was asked on this by another interviewer. Yeah, what was the Yeah. If possible, also mention the interview that uh, chemical composition and. No, no, not uh, not really required. Camping chemical composition is yeah, very. If you know, if you know, yeah, if you, know you can mention. Okay. They'll be impressed if you mention the composition. The chemical also. composition. Like, like if for yeah, yeah. uh, widely used refrigerant R one three four A, which we called as a tetrafluoroethane, and its chemical formula is I guess uh, CF three CH two F. so if you know that perfectly you can mention yeah yeah correct so on that day ask me why can't water be used as a refrigerant what would what would you answer sir because of the boiling point higher boiling point yes one then then and uh, low freezing point zero and refrigerant have minus Yes. Point. So it will freeze so early. You can't say you you can't say low freezing point. It has a higher freezing point compared to other refrigerant. Yeah, compared to low refrigerant. Refrigerant. Yeah, higher freezing point compared to refrigerant. It will block the. And it uh, is uh, incompressible, right? Main thing. Corrosiveness. Yeah, correct. Corrosiveness. Co- corrosion. We also. And also, it has low latent heat of vaporization. I think I'm not saying, but I think so. I think is three one uh, is more important. Low boiling point, low freezing. Yeah, yeah. Low boiling point is the main main one. And low freezing Please. point is also. Okay. Because water okay. will not uh, it will block the flow and it will evaporate. Okay. Mainly, you need to mention that uh, it should be non-explosive. It should be non-explosive. So water is not explosive, no. You yeah, can't mention that. Water is not flammable. Also, it says you should have no GDP or no GWP or ODP. No, no, no. That you can't mention. Ruthik is uh, sponsored. Ruthik is sponsored. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in Anglo. Which company? Anglo. Okay. Okay. Anglo. Okay. 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 Don't mention explosive and all because water is not explosive. No, it is used to yeah. explode some fire. So see, and also, seeing, uh, this... if possible, uh, you can mention non-miscellaneous with foreign words. Non what? Okay, yeah, that is there. Non. So you can say non-corrosive. Uh, it is corrosive, so it can't be used over there. Water is corrosive. Another point is uh, valid point is low boiling point. And then, uh, yeah. So this should mean... we mention two or should we add few more things? Yeah, if you know that those many like two, three are enough. He started nodding, so I stopped saying all. Okay, okay, he said. I just find uh, more MS, right? Why? What? His preparation is going for MS, right? Mine. Mine. No, no. His preparation is going for MS, right? You asking me? MS, he, MS is sponsored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah, I think for all. Uh... Amsterdam, bro. He is already sponsored from Scorpio, Samsung. Okay, okay. And I have still uh, con- uh, doubt in expansion valve. Uh, I send a picture to Sir Faraz. Like in expansion valve, two cross sections. One is small. One have a small diameter, and other uh, other side have large diameter. And we. Uh, 
which will connected to the condenser and which one is connected to the evaporator. I will open the photo. Because uh, the pressure is decreases, uh, uh, the, the refrigerant coming from the condenser side, it should be a small cross section area. Uh, so, sorry, it should be big cross section area, large cross section area. This side of the thermostat expansion valve will have a small, it is a small uh, side. Yeah, side. large. Large. So, which one is connected to the condenser and which one is connected to the evaporator side? Large one is connected to the evaporator and smaller. I think so. Isn't it empty? Because pressure is increased because of the volume is uh, decreases. That's why. Because it makes sense now, but the refrigerant will expand, no? Yeah. So it requires a more more volume. So like the, the bigger one will be uh, the evaporator. Evaporator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Common sense kind of. No? Because Sir Fras, uh, while saying uh, explaining VRC, he said uh, large volume uh, cross section. That's why I said large cross section. Yeah, you said uh, in order this has large cross section area, so pressure decreases. So when it, the when the refrigerant passes to the so due to the large uh, enlargement of the volume, right? Because of the sudden enlargement of the volume, the pressure decreases since the volume is increasing. So, but how pressure will decrease if increase? Because of the Lekin, but the uh, if the volume will increase, Thomson effect. Yeah. See, Mir, 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 just see videos on YouTube about Joule, Joule Thompson effect. You'll understand. A 20 minutes video is there, wherein okay. the views are very, very good, like 20k, 30k. Watch that video, or or else I'll send a video. I'll send a video which was which I had seen. So watch that. Your concept will be clear. Don't mention this pressure increases, volume increases, and this is for ideal case. This is different. Uh. This okay. concept is different. Okay, so don't mention anything about venturi venturi effect. Nothing mm -hmm. about Gia Lussac law, nothing about this pressure increases, volume decreases, and only mention Joule Thompson effect. So, see videos and you'll understand it. Okay, okay, brother. Uh, if you will, uh, if you can uh, send the link, I'll, I'll, I'll send it. I'll send it. I'll okay. see which one I see. So, I'll send it. So, uh, is there any other question regarding the PCR system that may be coming? Yeah, I have a question Moisture. for Amstel. How moisture Custom. enter into the uh, VCRS? One is because of the when maintenance is going on. When maintenance is going on and when leakage in uh, welding site? Yeah, leakage came on. Then, but uh, then moisture, then the refrigerant will flow out, right? Welding is done on this refer systems. I don't think so. Brazing is done. Don't mention welding. Okay. Oh, brazing. Uh, sorry. Okay, okay. They'll judge everything of yours, no? If there are more than one or two interviews, no? They judge yes, yes. just by looking looking at your answers, no? They'll judge because for the IMS, no? K line yeah. was just sitting relaxed, no? With his uh, feet and all up, he was just relaxed. He was just listening how they give the answer. Then he started like last. They judge you first. If you say like while doing the welding and all, no? You mm -hmm. say because last time some interview had come for interview had come for Scorpio is him. Like they directly say, I'm done with this guy. Like this, this is in the interview. I'm done with this guy. It just shows like a wrong impression, no? Yeah. You don't say welding and all over there. So you mean brazing? No, uh, if you say, if you know only, then you say like charging is also enough for them. But you should, whatever you're saying, no, should be correct. Like full, full confidence yes. you should be. Can't yes, be saying yes. welding over there, okay? So, be sure. so what is brazing actually? Brazing is uh, done like uh, somewhere around 400 below, then below 400, no, above 400, I think, but not the uh, so this the melting point of the metal. Where in welding, you have very uh, high temperatures, no, where in the fusion of the metal takes place. Here, yes, it's yes. Only, only melting of the that filler rod, which is here, doesn't uh, melt the base, base metal. Okay, okay. Okay. 
So, uh, in leakage, what do, do you have any other answer for the leakage of refrigerant? Anyone? One is the I got maintenance. Oh, because of, uh, because of maintenance. Yes. Yeah. One is because of maintenance. Oh, or while that should be enough. But he'll ask then what, what kind of maintenance. Then he'll ask what what maintenance are carried on the refer system and all. Charging. So better to say while while charging the refrigerant, there can could be moisture that enters. Better to say this. So if you say maintenance, no, some of the if one interview, then okay. Then many interviews, no. If you say maintenance, the other guy asks what kind of maintenance are done on the refer system. Then you have blank. Yeah. So only we have to charge. use two words wisely. Oh, so I am giving you like uh, kind of hint. What what to say? How to say? You yeah. may, you will be having more knowledge, but yes. what to say is the correct way. What what not to say? Yeah. Choose the word wisely. Yeah. <laughs> so what is it? Uh, frosting is responsible for moisture because of entering of moisture. Frosting. Frosting is outside. outside if you have condensed on the outside, yeah, yeah, after outside the evaporator. Outside the, the, not because of moisture. No, no, inside okay. the ref, inside the system, nothing. It's hey, because no, of moisture present. I have one present. more question in this part. Hello? I think you want to say something. The, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, also, in the refri uh, interview will ask you that about the leakage of refrigerant lines. So he might also ask you that troubleshoot leak. How to troubleshoot it? We can find it out by uh, soap solution and halide torch. Oh, right? There are many, many ways like soap solutions or halide torch. Yeah. So there are some sulfur sticks. And on board, I have also uh, can... seen that. Uh, what what is the sulfur sticks? How, how, how it is done? Do you know anything about it? Uh, yes, I know about like uh, if there is a leakage in the refrigerant system using okay. ammonia as a refrigerant okay. and it is detected by sulfur sticks. So okay. in case of any leakage, the sulfur sticks gives white smoke. Okay. Yeah. So how does it indicate like it is uh, there is leak? Yes, I'm saying that uh, the sulfur sticks which we are using it gives the white smoke if there is okay, any leakage. Okay. 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 So you take it around the pipelines, and then if there is any leakage, you get a white yeah. white what is it white flame? White smokes. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. So you should be like confident, like Ruthik. How I'm asking? No, he is he's answering to the point. No, like like that. You should be confident enough. Also, you can be saying about halide because it is uh, mostly yeah widely widely used. Soap solution test, soap bubble test, and the halide test. In soap bubble test, we will just apply the soap solution, sir. Like in, in the pipeline, right? So the bubbles will come. That's it. Yeah, but uh, how how will you detect that uh, there is in, uh, just in case like if the leak has already happened and the refrigerant has gone only little, little is there so would it would it detect any bubbles and all how would it detect yeah. this would be ineffective right yeah this is ineffective yeah so what what, what I have seen you no know, when they had come to replace my refrigerant in the AC system so they charge it with they remove all the refrigerant na no? the previous one they charge it with nitrogen. Okay. okay, so they charge it with nitrogen and then they apply all the soap solution on the pipelines and then they can see like huge bubbles forming near the refrigerant. It's because of the properties of nitrogen, I guess. So I've seen this visually. Okay, so and after that, they remove nitrogen and then they charge with the refrigerant. They braze it and then they charge the refrigerant the correct time. Correct, no? So you mean nitrogen only? Uh, give no, no, I don't know. Oh, I do not know. Is, is it only nitrogen? But in my case, practical uh, this. The tire. Yeah. You can search about it. It has some special okay. property. Yes, it's yes. also cheap. Now it's also cheap. It is uh, waste if you use as the same refrigerant because it is expensive. Around four five thousand for AC like your domestic this AC system and all using a that. Uh, the refrigerant like R134A and then checking for leakage and again it will go right so use yeah. it and also it, if it leaks again then again issue of ozone depleting potential and ozone depleting can we suck back the refrigerant to the compressor I, I don't uh, know you'll have storage. to see videos you'll have to see videos have, you know. uh, one question regarding suppose we have rectified in the pipeline that we have uh, a leakage here then how to rectify the problem now? What how to what do we do? 
how to fix the problem how to fix the problem yeah how to fix the problem No idea about it. This type of problem yes, we are not talking. Nah, can be asked. Huh? Depends on the interview. Yes, no. Inter it depends on interview. Yeah. Okay. If you got to know that there is a leakage in a pipeline, so we might uh, change that particular pipeline, or uh, we might uh, uh, weld it. Okay. Welding is done, Ruthi. But welding uh, yes. is done, right? If the refrigerant is not in the pipeline, like for maintenance purpose, if it is empty, so we can do. Okay. So, one so we are talking about refrigeration part right now. Yeah. So there are many definitions like the small small definitions which we do not do. Prepare now, Safra. Also prepare for why only brazing, why not welding the yeah, yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It can be yeah yeah. Why only brazing? Refer the this and all material and all 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 what what, what is used. Huh? I have I one more question regarding this moisture. Same Wait, now Salman is calling. Huh? Salman is calling. Yeah, yeah. First you call then then. Uh, Rutik, do you uh, have this answer? Wait, where is the question? I just noticed that. Yes. The answer is uh, sponsored by Scorpio, right? Yeah, yeah. This, this time, this year. Okay, okay. Congratulations, man. I have seen his mock interview. Yeah, yeah. It was quite good. Yeah. yeah. Wait, uh, one more question. Sorry? Uh, he is not listening. He is in, in a call. Yeah, yeah. I have. Uh, yes, Mir, uh, first, you. what is your question? If it's uh, related to different topic, uh, first, uh, let us complete then the. Post no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. You have a question regarding the moisture thing? Yeah, it, yeah, it's related to it. Okay, uh, I mean, so. what, what are the weakest part of the VCR system that uh, the maybe possible possibility of uh, leaking? Like just just like I said before, the joint or other is charging. So if I use soap and bubbles, uh, we only find. Uh, uh, leakage on the joint side, not the other part of the uh, refrigerator, uh, other part of the VCRS. So, You're saying only so if in we the use a highlight, yeah, we, if we use soap bubbles, so we can only use on joint side. How we can find uh, leakage with the help of soap bubbles, other part of the uh, VCRS system? By using a light source, we can find it in the other parts too, right? You just need to move the halide torch very slowly upon the pipeline. So how halide torch indicates uh, it becomes the green is leaking? Yeah, if it's leaking, it's... it becomes green, green in color. Am I right with this? You mean that yes, light right. coming from the it's torch there is... There is a leakage uh, in yeah. a refrigeration system mm -hmm. uh, where the freon is used as a refrigerant and it is detected by, uh, sorry, it is detected by halide torch. So the color of the flame will change to green, bright green. Bright there green. is any leakage. Yeah. So is that flame? Is that flame uh, in inside the torch? Torn. Is that flame inside the torch? Is it, is it flame? He is asking, is it flame inside the torch? It's not uh, flame, no. right? Um, no, it's not flame. Yeah. It's just a torch light coming from me. No, torch light and that uh, flame or a light will turn, will turn to the bright color. If there is any leakage in the system. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, how does the red, uh, red light was converted into dark uh, green? Uh, why it is happened? Will they ask that kind of question? No, I don't think. Maybe, uh, maybe not. But still, it is but a good yeah, question. It's a good question. I have just. Maybe because of reaction and all something, no? Reaction and all. Reaction of chemicals. Yeah, something like that. But nothing is coming and what out are... of the uh, light torch. That was just light is coming. Something needs to react with the light, right? But the reaction will take place something else because how that light will turn into different color. Yeah. 
If we can have just like a radi radiation, uh, radium, if we put into the sunlight, it, the, it change its color. So something like that. I think it's about the Gaumann effect. Do you know radium, when we put radium into the sunlight and if we keep to, uh, towards the dark area, it will uh, shine like a bright green color. It's different, no? There's no chemical reaction as well, no? That is because of yeah. light light effect or something that is different don't mention that this is no, no, just i'm uh, asking you okay okay yeah, I, yeah. I got what you see yeah. but don't mention this all in the interview and all <laughs> no 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 just say, yeah, don't say like this and what are the possibility uh, possible area of leaking joints yeah. valves and all joints mean valves joints, yeah, joints yeah. valves expansion valves yeah, okay. I'll advise you that uh, not to bring yourself in trouble in interview because you are adding some additional points which will bring you in trouble to so be point to point in your interview. No, I just asking uh, to know uh, like, for the and knowledge. So watch this Amsterdam uh, Mox interview. He was quite good in the interview because he was mentioning a point to point in the interview. I, I have seen his mock interview. Yes, yes. Which one did you see? Which one did you the, see? The thing? Uh, IMS, wala. I don't remember the IMS, right? Okay, okay. You are sponsored, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anglo, they have not sent me a mail or uh, still, uh, it's been two months now, waiting fed up also. Okay, so you have <laughs> cleared the exam? Yeah, yeah, I have cleared the exam. I'm waiting for, when when you give your this return? Uh, return? In May. Okay, okay, okay. May. Okay, okay, okay. So I have a question regarding the moisture. Because in Anglo, right now in Anglo, they have reduced the intake to bring the waiting to reduce the waiting period because the demand and supply problem is. Okay, rising. okay. Anglo problem now because every year they have around 120, 130. So not just yeah. uh, we'll carry on. So just not wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah, yeah. So the question is, uh, if there is leakage in the refrigerant. Then uh, what will occur? Sorry, not leakage. If there will be moisture in the refrigerant system inside the refrigerant system, then what will? Occur? I will answer. Yeah, I have uh, one point. Uh, I think uh, yes, please. Me. Uh, one is uh, the freezing take place in ev evaporator capillary tube, and second is uh, uh, it will uh, uh, make corrosion with. Uh, with metallic components and other is it will mix with oil that will decrease the its lubricity forces so these are the three points i know okay these are three points and uh, the cross question no cross question no i uh, wanted to know the, uh, the final answer is it uh, the final answer that uh, because of these reasons, this will occur. These are the things that will occur if there will be moisture in the refrigerant. The problem uh, is uh, the problem will uh, come is the uh, answer which I have no only one only one I have it will clock the thermostatic expansion why because the, the small answer. orifice is there no I okay, have okay. the same I only know this much I got only this answer that's why I was asking this question is yeah. there any other reasons okay, okay. so yeah. what what did you say. It is lock the thermostatic expansion one orifice. Block the the point, yeah, because at the point freezing occurs, no? So sudden yeah. drop in pressure, that means that uh, water which is there at such temperature, which is minus 18 and all, will cause the water to freeze, which is moisture. So at that uh, point, there won't be flow of refrigerant taking place. Towards and the what? evaporator side, right? Yeah, 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 towards the evaporator side. Meaning the orifice, the orifice which is there will get locked because yeah. at that point only you have uh, temperatures of like minus 18. Yeah. Can you imagine water? What will happen? Like ice, 20 crystals will be yeah. at zero, zero. crystals are formed. Zero, minus one, minus two. So at yeah. minus 18, just imagine. So it'll clock the thermostatic expansion wall. Yes, I also so that's why that's why have, have uh, yeah. uh, from YouTube. I saw a video. Please share the link in the group. 
Yes, and it also Amstrad it also mentioned that uh, uh, the refrigerator uh, it will increase the load on compressor because of a uh, continuous uh, freezing and condensing of water will increase the load on uh, compressor and it will if, uh, decrease the efficiency i will send a video mr hello yeah i think he is sekfas yeah 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 audible ah uh, you said that the thermostatic expansion will block uh, will uh, will there is a freezing uh, what happen if the uh, i pressure high temperature is entering entering to the thermostatic expansion wall which means the uh, it melts the uh, freezing no i didn't got your question what will happen if high pressure and high temperature in the enters the thermostatic expansion wall yes uh, there is a freezing occurs in thermostatic expansion wall you said that yes sir uh that uh, high pressure high temperature will melt the uh, uh melt the ice freezing snow. that is taking place you, are, you mean to say right yeah 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 but it it will if it will clog the orifice then how will this high pressure high temperature represent pass to the orifice to melt it it needs to pass through it right okay okay let's talk when they are strong is in which and uh, there is a sub cooling question uh anson says that uh, i will explain yeah i think he will be joining again sub cooling uh, i will try to say something with example how the sub cooling will take this is correct me if i am wrong suppose the temperature of the condenser the sea water temperature is suppose the normal temperature was 30 degrees celsius or 35 degrees celsius and if there will be a temperature drop in the sea water suppose the temperature is less the sea water that is being used then the temperature of the refrigerant will drop more right when it will after the phase transformation has taken place it is converted fully into saturated liquid before leaving the condenser then again the temperature will drop because of this lower temperature sea water that is being used right and then it will go to the diode and then it will go to the thermostatic expansion valve am i right there so how sub cooling takes place correct am i right uttik ashok yeah yeah yes 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 okay if he is asked if the first question will be how is sub cooling take place i can just give this example right yeah you can also cross question you that what is the definition of sub cooling so we can go for that okay definitely i don't know the definition you can right you can say basically that uh, the total additional cooling of the liquid refrigerant yeah liquid yeah, refrigerant yeah, yeah. at its condensing temperature or uh, between the condensing temperature and temperature at which the liquid enters the expansion valve the i have got so one definition is it correct the process of cooling the liquid refrigerant below the condensing temperature for a given pressure is known as sub cooling is it yes, right yes right 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 oh. what well, i just need to uh, the mother this definition yes me uh my question is uh, uh, you said uh, freezing uh, because of moisture uh, freezing take place and it block the expansion valve so there are two side of expansion valve which one will block uh, from evap evaporator side or from condenser side mainly it will uh, block the orifice but towards the evaporator side the freezing will mean freezing will take place right yes in that's why i'm in the in towards the through, evaporator side yeah. towards the evaporator side freezing take place because it, it will not go. pass uh, towards the condenser so how will so basically it will uh, freeze towards the uh, evaporator yeah, side yeah, yeah. so is there any other questions why low pressure refrigerant is uh, given to the evaporator question why low pressure refrigerant is given to the evaporator why the pressure of the refrigerant needs to be low before it goes to the evaporator you mean after uh, after expansion valve yeah, yeah. 
and in case we have higher pressure in the evaporator that means there is no cooling producer leak. so no it doesn't make sense like they won't be cooling but uh, what, what, what you have concluded to yeah we, i had one added one point that is the cooling in the i added i added the boiling point if the pressure will be higher the boiling point will be also higher no, meaning say, higher i did not get higher meaning higher than the condenser or what what higher pressure if higher pressure the refrigerant is passing into the like see if the condenser is uh, 20 bars and it's, let's say evaporator is 10 bars so tell me a value kind of it's higher than so the condenser condenser higher than the said it won't it won't, uh, it won't this uh, what is a it won't cooling effect won't be produced only okay. because the thermostatic expansion wall like uh, works like that only it works from high pressure to low pressure that's how the temperature reduces yes yeah so cooling won't be produced only it makes no sense like yes that's the main reason cooling what if it's not occur so you mean if the pressure not decrease in expansion wall the cooling will not occur yes yes pressure is directly proportional to temperature so temperature also increases but so, temperature already decreases in condenser now If the pressure will be higher, then also it will affect it. If the pressure will be higher, then also it will affect it. Expensive only decrease pressure. Actually, condenser already sent the less temperature refrigerant to the expansion. If it, let's say it is like, if the condenser is 20 bar, and then say evaporator is around 19 bar, there will be cooling produced, but very less. Like, if it crosses above, then above 20 bar, it won't produce cooling. Makes sense, now and then, uh, yeah. Near uh, in condenser, uh, the temperature decreases due to the phase change. Yes. In no. in condenser. Yeah, because of condenser, son. No, no, no. Temperature decreases. You are saying. And also boiling will also play a role. Okay, Safra, you can also mention boiling. So uh, the, I can yeah, add yeah. the boiling point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. They won't uh, ask a question like yeah. if it uh, it is more than the condenser, it will say like it. If, let's say if it is ten bars, then it what will happen if it is like fifteen bars or twelve bars or something? They won't say it is higher than the condenser. It will say if, let's say it is very close. What will happen? So you can mention at boiling point and all. So that will be a valid one. So first mention boiling and then say cooling. Okay, okay, okay. Then I will just add the cooling part. I have already wrote the. Boiling. So, uh, Sarfraz, please uh, give one complete answer. What happened if because it's Anglo questions? So, I just want to answer. So, we can say that since the pressure is increasing, the boiling point will be increased, and also the cooling effect will be taking place. So, they already increased. The vapor will directly convert into uh, the refrigerant will convert uh, quickly into a fully saturated vapor. That's why the cooling effect will not take place. This is asked by Anglo, Raghandra, sir. Yeah. This is the question. It's a question. Is the high pressure entered into the evaporator? So that's why I'm asking the clear answer. Okay. So you will be answering Anglo, Mir? Yes, yes. I am preparing for Anglo. Okay, 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 okay. So, sir, first, please write that. I will give the answer, then I will send it. Yes, yes, brother. Uh, those who get permission from Anglo, uh, there are more chances of getting January batch. Are you saying to me, Ruthik? Yes, yes. For me, selection is enough. <laughs> <It's> sponsorship <laughs> is enough. <laughs> because I think I am January tired. batch is full now. Vacancies, how you came to know there are vacancies in January batch? No, because uh, there are few vacancies. Okay, okay, because some have left and gone, no synergy and all people have left and gone. Some people, yes, yes, because yeah, yeah, if you take yeah, yes, why because of uh, we shipping company and then C span is uh, joined for the placement uh, the sponsorship. Where uh, the IMS, uh, yeah, in Savan Island. No, I don't know about Savan Island, and all. I have heard, yeah, they have signed an email. But let's see, till now there are no placement records. Hey. Now the thing is, in IMS, uh, let me continue. Yeah. In IMS, 
those people who are unplaced they get selected by 7-Eleven. I just in IMS. Just today itself, I have checked the website of IMS. In that the placement record, I have seen that some of the students are selected by 7-Eleven. Okay, okay. And I have also because heard before, that they now they are having their own college, no? Now they are having their own college. Maybe before they were doing like that. No, in college, which, which batch? batch? Which batch? Last year batch? Yeah, last year. Batch. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe. And I have but uh, going to uh, Marshall Chipman. Chip Marshall Chipman. Marshall comes, he spends from yeah, yeah. spend Marshall. Those are the companies now remaining. Where Marcel come? Where Marcel come? Oh, wait, I forgot IMS. to tell you when this. IMS. This is a recorded session and we'll be putting it in the website. IMS. Okay, okay. So we can't mention yeah, this. Yeah, these things I don't know how to edit and all. Yeah, you can pause the recording when we are talking this. So I'm very bad at handling OBS. Okay. I used to add those shortcut keys and then we used to. Hotkeys, hotkeys. Yeah, with hotkeys, and now they are not working. Why I don't. So, is there any other questions regarding uh, VCRS? Yes, one is. What does it mean? Saturation. When I when we say saturated vapor and saturated uh, liquid, so. If like if I say uh, the low pressure, low temperature saturated vapor enter into the compressor, so then he will uh, they will ask what is saturation. So what I will give the answer. The question point is the point when it will convert into when the phase transfer conversion is taking place, right? Is it the same? Like if you said, why not you say only vapor? Why you said saturated vapor? question is wrong actually. We might ask you that what is saturation temperature or what is saturation pressure? No, no. When we said the low temperature, low pressure saturated vapor refrigerant enter okay. into the uh, compressor. So then maybe he will ask what is saturated vapor? Uh, so you are saying that he might ask you what is saturation, right? Yeah, what is saturation? Why not we you say vapor okay. only enter? Why you said saturated you vapor enter? You can say the condition and which uh, mixture of a vapor and a liquid can exist together at a given temperature or pressure. It is called a saturation. So it means not completely completely vapor. It means the some amount of liquid is also there. Yeah. Uh, liquid form is also. While Similarly, in condenser, you were saying. Sorry. While going to compressor, you were saying the liquid will be there. He was giving a, just an example. Okay. Phase, phase transition taking place now from liquid to vapor to fully vapor so that is the point where in saturation I have one question uh, right in this point so okay. when the phase transfer has taken place in the evaporator okay okay so the temperature will increase right no it is latent heat no it is latent heat it absorbs latent, latent heat, heat. heat so there is no only phase transition takes place only the phase transition will take place. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So the temperature will uh, not change. Like say ice which is there, no, which is at 0 degree Celsius, till it fully gets melted, it will be still 0 degree Celsius, it's like that. But right. it, after getting converted full into fully uh, vapor. saturated vapor, yeah. after then, that it will start increasing temperature. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Then the temperature will increase, right? Right in yeah, the, yeah, inside yeah. the evaporator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you kind of yeah, yeah. If you have some superheating, then ideally it should be saturated vapor. But actually speaking, in the actual cycle, it is actually superheating is going on. So after the dome, when the line goes, so it is actually temperature increases. Yeah. Because, During the evaporation. Yeah. Because I have uh, read that uh, we need five to seven degrees of superheat. Yeah, that is required. So it saves like safety, safety kind of for safety the compressor. Kind of. okay. Yeah, yeah. It shouldn't be not too much of super heat, not less of super heat. Some optimum value like four to five or four. What to happen seven. if the degree of super heat is more than the E degree? Yeah, Safra, so I discussed this before. Yeah, so yeah. And if uh, your question be... is, what will happen if the degree of super heat is more? Yeah. Then the refrigerant in the sensing bulb will. Okay. Get the temperature in that is really increased. 
show into a coil. In vaporized mode, the pressure will increase. The more pressure will increase in the sensing mode. Due to which the refrigerant in the capillary tube will flow towards the diaphragm, and the orifice will be open to. There and also, one more... detail can add no that refrigerant. Uh, what will happen if there is more superheat? Means Basically, more temp. Yeah, that is. Basically, what interviewer expect expect from you that uh, for this question is that because of increasing the degree of superheat. The refrigeration capacity decreases. This is what we expect, and this is what Pranit sir told in the yes, yes, uh, yes. package. He mentioned that refrigerant capacity, refrigeration capacity decreases. Refrigeration capacity decreases. How it is decreased? It take times to uh, enter the saturation dome. I think. I, I think that what he mentioned, no refrigerant effect was wrong. I think. I think the work input will increase as well. It will increase the refrigeration effect with the expense of work. Work will be taken more by the compressor. This is what I have studied in my B Tech. Okay. I so think it will, it will it will it will, so it will increase refrigeration effect. It will increase refrigeration effect. So refrigeration effect is the point, no? That evaporator wherein the fluid comes. That four to one line, no? On the TS plot. Below that, if you draw a shaded line, no, that is the refrigeration effect. So four to one, which is the evaporator process, no. From there, if you draw a line down, no, on the TS plot, that is the refrigeration effect. So if you have a superheat, that means uh, the refrigeration effect will increase, but at the expense of work. Compressor will be taking more work for the superheat. So there should be some optimum value. And also another valid reason could be if you increase the temperature, na. Uh, at the means more of superheat. That means more, more uh, like volume of the gas will like uh, increase anything specific volume. Correct, na? That means less of uh, less uh, that less gas will enter into the compressor since the temperature is rising. That means less into the compressor. So, so that can also be added. Got it, na, Sabral? Yes, sir. Like in the air compressor, why put air cooler and the after cooler? That means more more dense air more dense. we can add in the yeah yeah. So that means if you keep an optimum value, that means you can put some uh, uh, less, uh, more, more denser refrigerant into the compressor, thereby increasing efficiency. I think like I will have... explain this uh, part in the sub cooling and uh, superheating in the with respect to compressor. Okay, okay. Yeah, but sub cooling, no, you don't require any work input and all. Yeah, sub cooling yeah, can be done like any temperature different. No? Yeah. You can increase also, the refrigeration. Also, I need to mention one thing that uh, we do not want the degree of superheat to be 18 degree or 20 degree Celsius. Just 5 to 7 degree yes, Celsius is fine because it will uh, it will be affecting our refrigeration capacity, and uh, by doing so, it will keep the compressor safe as well. Guys, uh, I think uh, this one property of refrigerant is left. I think we will continue with the uh, next day. It's two hours now. Will it be all right? So thank you so much. There is one question left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about safety? Why That's freezer is kept at the top of the refrigerator? This is mostly asked question. Why? Freezer is kept at the top of the refrigerator. I it, was asked in, it was asked in gradation for me that uh, why freezer is kept at the top of refrigerator. Why freezer is kept at the top of the refrigerator? It's the region where uh, moisture coating takes place, right? Uh, I, I, can I answer? Okay. Uh, because we know that the, the cool air is dense, then the warm air so it flow from down downside and warm air go upside that's why we put a uh, top because yes. uh, cool air is heavy so it will come down that's why ac put uh, top side and room heater put downside that's the answer right okay yes you are right and also for those who are expecting a mail from angular uh, there's one question Frequently asked in Anglo, uh, why AC is in turn and fridge is in later? Yeah, I will answer. So, uh, turn shows, uh, 
liters shows the capacity cooling capacity and the liter shows the uh, uh, wait cooling uh, sorry, storage capacity yeah liter shows the storage capacity and ton shows the cooling capacity why is it so why only like that because we can give, uh, take the uh, definition of what is one ton of refrigerations so in this uh, definition we can understand it shows the cooling capacity the amount of heat absorbed from the water to make one ton of ice at 0 degree celsius in 24 hour so it means ton is showing the cooling capacity ओके Okay, MSc. You should be prepared. Good idea about MSc. I have said that to you. Yeah, yeah. Prepared for electrical section. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y